Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of Glacial Awakening. Last episode, we escaped from our tiny hole under the glacier and made our way up to the barren surface, where I've been exploring slowly to try to find a place to live. And so far, well, I found this place, and it's just like three stories tall and kind of small, and there's no like roguelike dungeon in the basement, but I think we're just gonna say this is cursed and move on, right? Th this seems like a bad idea, right? I'm moving along. All right, this seems a little bit more appropriate and a little less haunted by demons. And coincidentally enough, there's another one right over the other side of this hill. But if you come in here, you can see that it thankfully already has a door, so we don't have to solve that. A nice little living quarters, some basic storage, a little storage room down here in the basement with some hay bales, which I'm sure will come in handy, and blocks of skin hide, which I find questionable. And then a little room full of reindeer. All in all, a nice, cozy place to live, although I might have to rearrange the furniture. But this will at least get us started and give us some basic space to work with that's relatively safe since there's a door. The hay bales weren't real, but I made some chests and cleaned up. You can make the stone chests by making these cobblestone or andesite or granite or whatever parts that are just two of the blocks. So it's basically the same as making a wood chest. Anyhow, now let's go take a look at what we need to start to doing to do to progress. And taking a look at this, we can see that we just finished this one because we created an early chest, which got me a tool I've never actually seen before. I don't remember this from last time. It looks like we can just search it for, I don't know, cave roots? Oh, yep, and then they, they, they pop up. Interesting. But surely we should actually work on progressing though and not just looking at our new tools. So now it looks like it's time to get some basic materials and some more basic tools before we progress on. And it looks like we want to make a stone rock grinder to turn cobble into gravel and gravel into sand now that we can get cobblestone out of the earth. But this requires some snow to go make another ice crystal. Thankfully I brought a bunch of it up with me. So I had a moment of panic where I thought I wasn't going to be able to make sticks because I thought I wasn't going to be able to make torches because I thought I didn't have water. And then I found this sitting in here in the shed with the reindeer. So, uh, crisis averted. But I made the grinder and it's pretty simple. You just go to up some cobblestone and hit it with the grinder and it becomes gravel. Put the gravel down, same thing. And you can ore excavate it and that will give you your sand and your flint. Which completes this task and gives us another grinder and a stone wand. Because we want a really terrible builder's wand. But I suppose it'll be useful for laying out cobblestone rows to vein mine. Next up is a cheap wooden bucket that slowly destroys itself because that's great. But it's at least easy to make. It's just three sticks and plant fibers. Which would also have solved the problem I just ran into with the water I suppose. So I forgot I wasn't filming and made the hammer and I'd make the joke but the quest is doing it for me. But the recipe is really simple. It's just stick, plant fiber, and rocks. That said, I have no idea what this is for yet other than for use with the anvil because I don't know what recipes actually use this. It doesn't actually say. And then this one is just disgusting because this is fleshy snow nuggets, which is just rotten meat and some snowballs. Seems that I don't have rotten meat, nor do I want to eat this. We're going to put this off till later. Which leads us to clay, which we can either find underground or by using bone meal that we don't have. So I guess I'm going to go do some exploring. Although I suppose I better kit myself out first, so I made some new flint tools, including a sword. Since they apparently want me to kill stuff. Well, as soon as I stepped outside, I immediately got attacked by a headcrumb zombie and it dropped some rotten flesh, so I guess we're doing this. Well, I needed rotten flesh and immediately got attacked by a baby zombie, and, well, I'm healing, but it had me at zero hearts. I don't know how I'm still alive. Must be the power of blue. Fine, I did it, but it very nearly killed me again. So I've been running around for a little bit just to see if there's anything that's near the surface, and so far I haven't had any real luck. But I won't lie, I got real excited when I saw these in the distance and thought they were trees. I feel horribly lied to. Alright, so I did some digging around under my base. I dug a hole down there and tossed a ladder down to get it down to about where clay is supposed to appear and had no luck. Did find a whole bunch of ores that I couldn't dig up as well as some stuff that I could that we will eventually use, I'm sure. So we're going to do it the hard way, which is mixing up bone meal with crushed limestone. Crushed limestone is just a limestone rock smashed with a hammer, so now we know what the hammer's for. And bone meal is not the standard recipe, so we can either take the antlers we have upstairs and do this, find some small bones, do that, grind up the bones in a mortar with a pestle to get four of them, or we can smash the bones up to get three bone shards, which we can then smash again to get two bone meal. So this would actually give us six at the cost of a hammer. So smashy, smashy. Man, this is tedious, and these hammers get used up fast. But in they go. Oh, and this apparently consumes the water. Okay, this mod pack is completely terrifying. The mobs aren't all that dangerous, except I'm super weak. I ran outside to go get some water and got ambushed by a creeper. 
But now we have an infinite water source at least. All right, and now we finally have enough to finish this. And that leads us to setting up strainers. This requires a strainer base, which is the clay and the sticks we just did, and a survival strainer, which requires a bunch of string or a bunch of animal hide straps. And the animal hide straps comes from pieces of leather and blue flint, which the blue flint we were getting out of the gravel sometimes, so we've got some of that already. And this is just butchering a piece of leather. And the butcher's axe is just for flint and stick, and we can do that easily. So thankfully, we already have a bunch of leather here. We just need to go turn it into straps. All right, and that was easy enough, but now we need to go probably make a handful more of these, as well as set them up outside somewhere in some water, because these take up a bit of space, and this base is not big enough. We're going to have to go make a real base at some point once I actually have real tools, but right now it's just tedious. All right, so I ended up putting this under my base because otherwise the water will freeze. I've got two strainers here. They're both going to be these different strainers because they get different things. The survival strainer, which is the simpler one to make, gets us stone and clay, which we obviously need. And the survivalist one gets us bone chips and flint shards as well as stone dust, which I'm sure will come up later. So what you do is you put running water flowing through it. As long as there is another strainer base in any of the blocks surrounding it, it, it does not lose efficiency. So I'm gonna put a water block here and here, and they'll go into each of these separately and they should run at full efficiency. Although I'm gonna have to go get more water and this bucket's about to break. But let's test this out. So I put the water in, in here, and now there's water flowing over both of these. If we look in here, this one hasn't picked up anything yet. And this one has already gotten a few different items. There we go, for some reason breaking the blocks fixed it. Now we've got everything working correctly. Now I should note that these do get used up over time. We will have to replace these. All right, and now that we've got that cooking, we can actually move on to the next one, which was to make fertile soil from the materials we were getting from there. Because the fertile soil required the bone shards, which is the big one in there. Which lets us move on to hopefully finally being able to get some wood. Because now we need to make some mutation paste blocks, which is three fertile soil, some bone shards, and then some stone dust blocks, which is all stuff we're getting from the basement now. I'm gonna have to go kill some reindeer, aren't I? But before we get to that, let's make my life with the strainers a little bit easier and show you what I wanted the stone for because there's an interesting little recipe change. Because it turns out one of the things you can use stone for is to make hoppers in this one using any chest, including the stone ones. But it means we can do things like set up a rudimentary hopper chain, which is down under the dirt there, into a chest early on, since we don't have pipes yet. I had my first death while I was out trying to get some more leather, and I think it's because I had the audacity to kill a penguin. I died to a head crumbs randomly while I had my inventory open. So, uh, I think I'm gonna call this a sign and call it a good time to quit while we're ahead for the day. We made a lot of progress. We got some basic automation underway. We've got some materials rolling in, but we do not have a tree yet. We'll work on that next time, though. If you found this episode interesting and entertaining, please consider leaving a like or subscribing if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.